objective of this video tutorial is to explain main steps to prepare samples for the observation by scanning electron microscopy SEM. Scanning electron microscopy is used to obtain magnified and high-quality images of the ultrastructure of biological samples. This technique allows to study intimate relationships between organisms. Here, you can see diatoms and macroalgae living inside a sponge skeleton. Microphotographs at scanning electron microscope are in black and white. However, it is possible to recolor images using a photo editing software. In this picture, you can see flower-like reproductive structures of a hydrozoan. Here, a modular pattern of a thicate hydroid is evident. Scanning electron microscope allow you to observe much more particulars respect to light microscopy. Here, you can see the ultrastructure of a diatom. Steps to prepare samples for the observation by scanning electron microscopy are 1. Fixation 2. Dehydration 3. Critical point drying 4. Sputtering There are several procedures to preserve biological samples. In order to observe the ultrastructure of marine invertebrates, you could keep the samples in buffered glutaraldehyde for one hour. Then, rinse the samples with artificial seawater. Remember to follow safe laboratory practices and procedures to handle reagents and lab tools. Second step consists in dehydrating samples through a graded ethanol series to gradually replace water with ethanol. Follow passages illustrated in the table to transfer your sample from low-grade ethanol to absolute-grade ethanol. This procedure is necessary since it is not possible to observe wet samples by scanning electron microscopy. Wet samples can be analyzed by another technique, called environmental scanning electron microscopy. Now, it is necessary to eliminate the ethanol to obtain dried samples. Critical point drying is a method to dry samples prior to examination in the scanning electron microscope. First, collect the samples from their container, drain off the ethanol and introduce them into a pressure chamber of the instrument. When the chamber is closed, a specialized technician will start the procedure. At low temperature, a 5 degrees Celsius, liquid CO2 will be transferred by a cylinder to the chamber. Therefore, the chamber is heated until a critical value of temperature, which is about 36 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, and a pressure of about 80 bars, the CO2 will change phase from liquid to gaseous. A sample after CPD, appears exactly it was in water, and it does not collapse. After the CPD, prepare a box for containing your samples. Remember to proper label your sample box. Now it is necessary to place the sample on and pin stubs. A stub is a small dish made of aluminium measuring from 8 to 12.5 mm. Add a label to the stubs with a permanent marker. Before mounting the dried samples on the stub, select better portions under a stereo microscope. Using forceps, collect fragments that you want to analyze. Then, put on each stub a carbon adhesive disc. These discs are conductive and double-sided adhesive. Do not touch them by hands.
Using the stereo microscope, place the samples on the sticky stub surface. Put the stub in your sample box to transport it to the scanning electron microscope lab. Next step is sputtering, that consists in coating samples with a very thin layer of a conductive material, such as a gold palladium alloy, in order to improve image resolution and to limit microscope beam damage. The samples are introduced in an evaporator, where, in presence of an inert gas, the conductive material is sputtered on the sample surface. Under vacuum conditions, argon is introduced inside the cylindrical chamber. Then, the conductive metal is sputtered from the top of the chamber to coat the underneath samples. In this clip you could see an evaporator to coat stubs with gold. First, introduce the stubs into the pressure chamber of the evaporator. Then, Close the chamber and switch on the vacuum pump. Here, you can see the deposition of gold after argon is introduced into the chamber. This is a pictures, of samples, mounted on stubs and covered with gold. Final step is the observation of the sample at a scanning electron microscope. This microscope system consists in a sample chamber and a column where electron travel under vacuum conditions. Inside the column, there is an electron gun including a hot tungsten filament. Thanks to high voltage, the gun generates an electron beam which is focused on the sample surface by a set of condenser lenses. The sample surface reacts when hit by electrons, producing secondary electrons. The secondary electrons will be collected by a detector connected to a computer. Signals produced by the sample depend on sample topography. The elaboration of these signals allows to obtain a high magnified and well-defined image. In these clips you can see two different models of scanning electron microscope.